Even though Russia won the Great War, it was costly. And as the peace settled again in Europe, a civil war broke out. Liberals, socialists and revolutionaries rose up against Kolchak's regency. After years of civil war, the revolutionaries were losing the war and had to retreat to the east. After some years of political instability, a left-wing populist named Kerensky managed to take power. He has promised democracy and freedom, but not much has been done to support his promise. Our goal is to unite Russia again and end the dictatorship in Moscow. But before we can start reclaiming land, we need to look internally and build up our nation. But then, a troubling report reached us. Everywhere around the country there is a drought and we can't farm any more potatoes or other food. Starvation is spreading throughout our country. In the west, thousands have already died. And in the east, known for its fertility because of the Amur River, there are no more crops. The river has frozen up and everything has died around it. Even our capital has descended into anarchy because of the food shortage. It is enough. Kerensky has done nothing to stop this. He must resign. So we sent him a letter and luckily for him he chose to resign. But now a question has risen. Who should lead instead of him? Never mind. The army has stepped in. And the soldiers have elected Trotsky. He will lead us to greatness by reclaiming the motherland from the dictatorship in Moscow. To create a strong Soviet Republic, we must of course give power to the Soviets. And then get rid of all non-revolutionary parties. We will only allow disagreements between different factions inside the party. Our biggest problem is the famine. How should we get rid of it? One way is to sober up the population so that no one ever makes another vodka bottle out of the potatoes that the population needs to eat. To finally get rid of the famine, we will devise our first five-year plan. This way we will plan all our future crops and the famine will never happen again. And then we need to purge the bureaucracy that has slowed down the progress of our republic. With the famine eliminated, we can start thinking about reclaiming Russia. But first, we have to strengthen our military. First, we created a military police to ensure stability during the future wars. Secondly, we created labor armies. Farmers and laborers who are ready to protect our nation. With our military strengthened, Trotsky proclaimed the permanent revolution. The idea is a permanent all-out war against all enemies of our revolution. We must prioritize the spreading of our revolution over everything else. With that announced, it's time to begin with foreign policy. We will begin cooperating with our revolutionary friends in Germany. They helped us with our education by sending instructors and building a new university. Together we will spread socialism all over the world. To be able to take back Moscow, we need to approach their enemies and befriend them. We sent diplomats to the Baltic nations and the Intermarium. We mostly focus on Ukraine as a lot of Ukrainians are living in the region called Green Ukraine. Together we signed a non-aggression pact and they made a small investment into our country. It's time. The dictatorship in Moscow has started uniting Russia, so we need to start too. First, we will march north and take over the Far East and Slavic Republic. We advance to Yakutsk with our slow and terrible tank divisions. When we captured it, we had split their country in two. They didn't have another city, so they only surrendered once we had destroyed the western part and captured some tiles in the eastern. With all of the Far East united again, it's time to liberate our brothers in Siberia. With the war declared, we advanced in some tiles but got stopped once their army reinforced the front line. Both sides have massive supply problems, so pushing will be impossible. Instead, we will go around them by attacking our neighbors in Mongolia. We captured the south and then advanced north. The Siberians were reinforcing their allies, so fighting was intense. But after we got supply to the area, we captured their two major cities and they capitulated. 
We now had supply in some areas of the front, but as we began preparing our offensive, something unexpected happened. Ungern von Sternberg, the mad baron and his followers have attacked us. Their goal is to unify all of Mongolia. Luckily, we had some spare divisions to protect against them. So, instead of attacking the Siberians, we decided to first take over Sternberg's country. This way we would open a new front against the Siberians. In the south we managed to encircle divisions and advanced a bit but supply slowed us down as always. In the north we tried an encirclement but they pushed us back. So we reinforced with our military police and this time we encircled and captured a lot of land. Then we launched our most important offensive towards Irkutsk, one of the only supply hubs in the region. We captured it and now we finally have supply again. So it's time for the last offensive against Sternberg. We have taken over Siberia, but while we did, the Kavkaz society declared war on us. They are an accelerationist nation in the Caucasus who also wants to unite Russia. This won't go, we need to defeat them before we can take Moscow. But we only have a small front with them, so while we're at it we'll just go through Central Asia to open a larger front. We began with capturing the supply hub in Omsk and the city of Ulala. In Ulala we even managed to encircle a division. Then we encircled around 70,000 men of their army in the most eastern state. So now we had managed to weaken them and we launched a full attack on their whole front. We captured their capital and then went south to their remaining cities. After we captured them they surrendered. Now we had a much bigger front against the Kavkaz society, so we launched two attempts to encircle them, one in the Ural Mountains and one in Kazakhstan. The southern one failed miserably because of, you guessed it, supply. In the north, after one of our divisions got encircled, we managed to encircle their Ural stronghold and capture it. Then we attacked and took over one of two supply hubs in the region. I discovered that we had a supply hub in the south, so once we had built a railway there we could renew our offensive to encircle Kazakhstan. It was much more easy this time and we crushed them in no time. So with that our army is now far superior than theirs and we can launch an offensive all the way to the Caucasus. We have defeated the Kavkaz society. While we were at it, we also took over Lower Central Asia. So, the only thing left is to take Moscow back. But their military is strong. So we trained new divisions and encouraged leftist rebels inside their country to sabotage anything of military importance. Now we are ready. We declared war and then instantly began our offensive in the south. It seems like they weren't ready and we captured the supply hub and then encircled most of their mountains in the Caucasus. Then we achieved a massive encirclement. The dictatorship isn't so popular so their army has a low morale. This means this will be an easier war than we thought. So we launched an attack to the first major city, Sevastopol. At first it went slow, but then we managed to encircle some divisions and then cross to Crimea. 
After that we quickly captured Sevastopol. We launched another encirclement campaign and managed to encircle more than 30 divisions. With all the encirclements we have made already their armies in shambles. So we just continued with our massacre. We captured Tsaritsyn and renamed it to Trotskygrad. And we encircled them again, again and again. Then we captured Kursk, Nizhny Novgorod, Orel and Bryansk. Do you see the encirclement potential? If we capture Moscow, this whole area will be encircled. So we drove to Moscow. When we arrived, we didn't have time for any parade and we continued to close the encirclement. This is perfect. Their morale is so low, they can't even recruit new soldiers. People are refusing to get conscripted because they know they will get killed by us. So now we only need to liberate Petrograd. We have done it. Trotsky has united Russia. Thank you so much for watching. By the way, if you want to play this mod, turn on historical AI because otherwise the AI doesn't train any divisions. That's why it was so easy to kill the dictatorship in Moscow.